Well, I have a shocking report. Cue the fire. You're like, where is the elevator? It's under maintenance. Eight days. That's what they said. But we are going into Bank of America and what they just said, what they are doing, what is happening to your retirement accounts. But I'm shocked. But actually, nowadays, nothing shocks me. But let's, let's drop down to my lower third and let me show you the story. Oh, I'm sorry. I currently was researching the interwebs. Um... This will change you. This is this is what this Navy guy just said. Navy SEAL. He says, uh, when it gets hard, I'll tell you, yes, that, that will definitely change you. And usually not for the better. Sorry. <laughs> but more Americans. This is crazy. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question, give you a percentage. At what point is it bad? More Americans. That would be m mostly you. Because mostly Americans watch this. And for those of you that are not American, I love you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. Um, more Americans are withdrawing, withdrawing, that was a weird drawing, from retirement savings accounts. Bank of America survey. Okay, Amer more Americans are withdrawing from your, your savings, your retirement. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I'm going to go with the economy's not good and it's not a good thing. Now, if it's like, oh, 20%, that's okay, that's doable. The, well, you give me the give me the percentage that's bad. I mean, for me, anything above forty percent, I'm like, wow, we are in a lot of trouble. Well, Bravo, please scroll for us. Well, I will. Okay, perfect. Say say goodbye to uh, I don't know her name, Joseph and Shiana. Saw Carrie go by. I don't know who that is. A new bank survey. This is Bank of America survey shows. Feels like it's a game show. That Americans are tapping into their retirement savings. But I thought everything's okay. Well, our economy's growing, right? Oh, no? Can you just imagine when we roll like DEFCON 9 into this depression, pulling money out of their 401ks at an alarming, you know, I'll zoom in, at an alarming rate. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with alarming rate is not good. So when Bank of America gives you uh, potential consequences, oh, I'll give you lots, lots of potential uh, consequences, but I want to know. All right, and I've located the number, 36% from Kerry. 36%, from just 40%, 40. That's pretty close to half. And since I'm a doom and gloom channel, it's more than half. More than half of you guys are dipping into your, not just dipping, yanking polling, which goes back to the Navy guy. And I'll tell you, um, in my experience, um, when it gets hard, not, nothing good comes out of it. Your savings is depleted. Um, now, what, your 401k is going to be gone too? And you're probably pulling, and also said, you guys are taking out loans from it. That's great too. Remember, you got to pay that back. I'm just saying, college kids out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a coming, less than 30 days. I got another great story for you. Large bank loans, since we're in, uh, we're in banking. Um, this is good, because it has to do with the Fed. Actually, this uh, video has a lot to do with the Fed and how things are gonna go. Which, if you've subscribed to my channel, I'm gonna give you the stuff that you're not gonna get from the mainstream media because there's an agenda. Shocker, right? Large bank loan volumes slump. Well, let me help you with this. An economy is loans, okay? That's just what it is, sorry. We're in a debt-based system. Everything's debt. It's all debt. It's all debt-based loans. Fugazi, fugazi. On one side, someone gets rich. On the other side, well, someone gets poor. But loan volumes slump, huh? Despite Fed reporting massive deposit inflows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All of my money from my bank account isn't in my bank account anymore. It's somewhere else, getting me somewhere between 5 and 6%. Oh, and I got some worse news in regards to this article. Money market funds saw inflows, which mine not, not so much money market. I, I like more of a, give me more money. Uh, banks usage of the Fed's emergency. Well, I'm, you guys probably shouldn't have called it, uh, Jerome, you should change the name of that. Fed's emergency BTFP facility hit a new high this week. Oh, that's great. See, what's happening right now is you're running out there screaming, uh, draining your, well, okay, savings gone, poof, gone. Uh, credit card, oh, that's all-time record since the birth of Christ. You've never seen it that high. Uh, what else? Oh, that's right, that 401k that you used to have, but it's a great economy, everything's great. 
is now, you're, you're now depleting it. As they would say, alarming, shocking. This is not good. And another thing that's not good is this acronym here. I could do a lot of, I, I could do a lot of damage with those letters. BF, we, we got a P in there, we got a T in there. It's not looking pretty. But what is that, Bravo? I don't understand. Well, th this is the banks that, uh, that, that you bank with uh, and you put your money in and your trust that your money's going to be there. It's not there and it's not even money, uh, but they are all, all the banks are running, not even to the overnight window. You know, they've, that's, that, that was like yesterday and that thing's through the roof. Now they had to create a new one because they're like, okay, let's create some more Federal Reserve banking bailouts. It's not really a, it's loans. Well, that's okay. Nice try, Martin Young. Uh, Federal Reserve's banking bailouts reach a new weekly high of $103 billion. And this story is from June 30th. So what the banks are doing is exactly what you're doing. They're going to someone else who's creating Fugazi Fugazi and saying, hey, here we have some collateral. We have some mortgage-backed securities. Everything's upside down in the banking system. Can we get a loan? Just when we thought June 30th was all-time high of these, you know, the BTFP facility, looks like uh, we, we've, we've broken a new record, uh, hit a new high this week. But you don't get it, Bravo, Biden, everyone, the news, Jimmy, we're on a path to prosperity. <laughs> then why am I seeing articles like this? Twin sit crisis rattle America, words I'm not even going to say, but... They're really bad. Let's just say it doesn't get any worse than that. Yes, bravo, but what are your sources? Oh, okay. Here, CDC, which now you're like, well, I don't, then I definitely don't believe this article. But guys, if everything is so good, why, why, question. Uh, yes, I'd like to buy a question for a dollar, please, uh, Bob. Um, why is everyone throwing in the towel? Oh, well, well, why no? Why? It's because you're, in, again, you're in a debt-based system. And there's no way out of it. And the only way is down, which I'm going to go into the 10-year yield, and I'm going to show you. I know we've, we've popped that thing a little bit, but this is not the trend. The word up is actually an outlier. So I, I wouldn't, well, I would bet on it, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you. But, but you guys, it's, it's bad, and it's going to keep getting, I'm sorry, you guys, it's going to get worse. Because if you understood how the system is set up, Really quick, look at this, what this article says. Americans can't get a break thanks to surge. You can't get a break. Mortgages, food costs, all costs. Why consumers are getting that bad word. And now let me cue the fire and let me just explain. I know I probably haven't done this in a while, so I'll, I'll do this. Where does money come from? It comes from nowhere and it's not even money. It doesn't exist. You go into a bank and you say, I want a trillion dollars. They say, sure, write down on a sheet of paper. Here's a trillion. Do they have a trillion? No, but their balance sheet now does because they say you owe them one trillion. Have you paid them a trillion? No, but on their balance sheet, it's an asset. They say they have a trillion. Do you have a trillion? No, do they have a trillion? There's no trillion. It's just an entry on a balance sheet or we will just call it a ledger. Same thing, the Fed does the same thing. And people are like, oh, the Fed prints money. The Fed doesn't print money. Well, because I just showed you how money was created. But if you wanna to go to the Fed side, I'll show you that too. The treasury side, they. Write down on a sheet of paper. Here we go again. Bond, $100. Who wants to buy it? Is that bond money? I don't know if you want to call it money. But they write down on a sheet of paper, 100 bucks. Anyone? Anyone? Now, here's where the misconception comes in. People think the Fed buys the bond. They don't buy the bond. Nope. You want to know who buys the bond? Well, kind of you do. But I'll walk you through that. $100 bond. We've just had huge auctions, which is blue. Couldn't believe it. Billions and billions and billions and trillions. All these bonds, T-bills, long end, medium end, front end, T-bills, phone bills. It was all in there and everyone was buying it. Who's all buying it? That's the banks. That's your bank. Well, where are they getting this money from? They get it from you. And not just that, it's, a, it's globally. China, Japan, everyone is buying these bonds. I mean, almost the same way you would buy a bond, just not with a... Just, yeah, I mean, you're not the primary lender, so you don't get those kind of rates. But anywho, your bank, Chase, Bank of America, you name it, goes into your account and uses your money to buy those bonds. Then they have the bonds. Great. Then the Fed comes in. This is where the Fed comes in. They have a ledger, and they say, hey, Bank of America, do you want to you wanna put that on our balance sheet? Just let it roll off? Maybe we'll pay you a little more on the backside for that? Okay, your bank's like, great, great deal. So now it's on, it's now it's on the, the Fed's ledger. One, one month T-bill, okay, what happens when it rolls off? Poof, money's gone. Everyone already made their money up front. Look, and, and, and that's what you're seeing right now. Investors brace for turbulence as Fed's balance sheet shrinks 
by one trillion. Well, what's, what shrinks mean? It means it just matures. That's it. And they're not replacing them. Ta-da! There it goes. And when it kind of looks like this, well, I can't, I can't move. It just, it's going, it's, it's going down. It's, it, they're, they're expiring. They're, uh, they're, they're maturing. But it's okay because Janet, Janet got your back. She's out there with her Sharpies with Wright and Bond, right? Huh? Anyone want to buy these? It's the process is still going. People are still buying them and the Fed ain't printing money. Now, after the world buys them or you buy them with your, with your deposits, I know, crazy, right? Sometimes it can go to you, which we just witnessed about 10 trillion, right? That it, oh wait, it went to the banks. This time it went to you, what you do with it? You caused this inflation thing. You also caused this to happen. You're like, wait, how does this benefit me? Exactly, it doesn't. <laughs> That's why you're like, why isn't this working, right? Look, 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 right here, right here. See, see, uh, every time they do that, every time Janet does that, your taxes will go up, 253,000, because we have, a, we have a deficit of two trillion. Oh, we have more debt. Look at this debt, look at this, this is crazy. 30, almost 33 trillion, and it ain't stopping. So on one hand, your government will create a bond and then give it to you, and then you have to pay it back in your taxes. This sounds great. So now circling back around of how this entire system works, you're not gonna get a break and it's gonna get worse. And there is only two ways out of this. Well, CDC says there's three ways, but I bring you hope. Actually, there's more than three ways. I mean, you could uh, marry someone with a lot of money. You can run for office. You can become, right, where, where you're not untouchable. Well, unless you're president, then you, you just wanna go definitely be, be a, a Democratic candidate. Just ask Donald, it's a lot less of a headache. But that's just the game. That's that. I'm not, I don't play the politics. I get it. There's upside for them. I'm okay on my island. I'm just going to sell things, trade equities. That, that is my only solution. Like those things above my head, Meta, Tesla, S&P, NASDAQ. I'll go into the NASDAQ. Nice, uh, I'm waiting. I don't want to short it. I don't want to short. I know some of you guys are like, this is the crash we've been waiting for. You want to know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for the bounce. Then I'm going to launch a lot of digits, which I do, as you know, I have a wa two watch lists, bear market, bull market, and I launch digits with the correct setup, and then I exit said digits, and back to cash I go. But as this article says, Americans can't get a break. The cost of living, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's not blah, blah. And they, they teach you, everything's bass backwards in school. They train you. And then they put you in what's called, they institutionalize you, right? You're, you're put into an institution. And you're told how all of this works, but it actually doesn't work this way. So make sure, uh, kids, go out there and save your money. <laughs> I mean, it's neither. It's not money and you should never save it. Uh, the cost of living, eating and driving is going up, leaving consumers with nothing but empty wallets. Okay, yes, it's designed that way. It's like musical chairs, music stops, find a chair. Americans can't get a break financially, largely thanks to higher interest rates and greedflation. Is that what it's called now, greedflation? Well, I'll tell you, these rates are not gonna stay elevated for too much longer. How do I know this? Well, you go back in time. You just look, it's how the system, you think, ugh. anyways, another, another road I don't wanna go down. Here's, the, here's all the ways uh, the consumers are getting stuck and why. Well, tell us, Market Insider, that I have to pay you every year for so I don't get ads. You're welcome. U.S. mortgage rate at 23-year high. Well, hopefully you locked in that 3.5. Gas prices, U-turn. Yep, well, you could have traded it. Foodflation, yeah, you could trade that one. Uh, credit card debt, which I've warned you about, that this will go up in a tightening cycle. That's just what happens. So have no credit card debt. Make sure you're taking advantage of 6% because money always has to be moving. And you don't want to be on the other side. I mean, Einstein said uh, credit, you know, debt, this, this, uh, this thing that's happening, compounded interest. Uh, this is the greatest, uh, he doesn't say greatest invention known to mankind, but basically it's like the eighth wonder of the world. And you're either on the one side or you're the other. And I've learned for most of my life to be on the other. How do I do that? Bravo, I'm bro broke. Same thing. I'm broke. Complete sentences, bravo. Okay. Start a business. But I have no money. Borrow. But how can I borrow if I have no money? Uh, guys, when I was 
just, just past my drinking age. I bought a day spa in Los Angeles, one of the biggest. Not with my money, I borrowed someone else's. Not a bank, bank wouldn't give it to me. And I said, look at their balance sheet. Can I borrow some money? I'll pay you back. I did. And after three and a half years, I flipped it and I made a lot of money. So in life, I've learned how to leverage other people's money to make money and just, you just keep doing that. But Bravo, that sounds very complicated. Okay, take credit card. J jump over to Amazon and, uh, and sell a fake credit card. But I don't know how to do it. I have a course on how to do it. Look, uh, uh, take, you could do this one. I mean, what is this? Customize, pearl white background, sell that. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's not even science. I mean, this guy's making what? $3,000 a month, uh, $2,000 and $8,000. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, $13,000 a month. Or you could sell, this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually against Amazon's terms of service. You can't, you have to have a white background. You can't have your hand in it. Sorry, things that I know. White privilege card, that's great. Trump's everything. That's what it, that's what it says. How much you making? Three grand? What are you, what are you doing? Oh, 3,643. I mean, maybe after your costs, you're what? Three, three grand? But, Scott, and then after that, you're scot-free. Also, my course on this is $1,000. I know, you're like, wow. That's really expensive. Well, if you really loved us, you'd give it to us for free. But the problem with free is free. Oh, this one's funny. It has no value. Uh, but for you guys, uh, today, only a hundred bucks. Then it actually has, right? Okay. I, I'm not doing it for free, but you need to learn how to do this stuff. Do the McLovin. That's funny, right? Bust that at the, you know, you're in the club. You're like, can I see some ID? It's funny to me. Then you, after you start a business and you start making money, you could trade equities, just like Bill here, slime ball. Sorry, Bill. Um, I hope he gets, I, I, I hope, no, I, I do not wish harm on Bill. Bill, I'm sorry you're not a slime ball. Um, top economist David Rosenberg says, Bill Ackman's bet against the treasuries, which I wouldn't do right now, I'll show you, could end as badly as his herbal life wager. Wah, wah, wah. What we are referring to, again, goes back to this debt-based system. Uh, the bond market. Probably not a good time to short it right now, along with everyone. This is, again, it's, it's lopsided. You're, you're going to get wrecked, but go ahead. Guys, look, look at this. Here, look at the charts. Uh, up or down? Well, it's, it's up right now. Right, I, I know this. Here, let me draw a little channel for you. Are we going up or down? Well, since, uh, since the 70s, we've been heading down. And it probably does have a lot to do with also having no standards. 1971. Gold, nothing, no standards. What do we do here? And this little thing is what we call an, an outlier. And if we open this little oscillator with all this beautiful magic, especially if you're an investor, you'll know when to buy and, and when to sell. When these green, green bars get really up here close, that, that means you should probably buy. And then when this band gets up here, you should probably, right, be taking profit. And looking at this chart going back to forever, you would be uh, you would be right in just about everything. Look uh, here, look at this. Look at this. how about this uh, all time high? How that uh, how that work out? Right? You're basically like, yeah, this is a this is a great time to short this market. And the truth is, with Bill, is he really? I mean, I don't trust him as far as I could lift him. Oh, and just to let you guys know, the opposite trade on this would be TLT. See, see, green bars. This is this is your accumulation zone. Yes, you always look like an idiot because you're on the opposite side of the trade. And this, I circled the wrong one. You get my point. This is your sell zone or your take profit. Uh, and then down here, these these bands, right? Yeah, uh, accumulation. And there are actually very few assets that I would ever consider buying and holding. I'm not a, I'm not a holder. This is uh, the NASDAQ, wouldn't buy and hodl this one. Some of my, okay, if you wanna be an investor, you, you know, Bitcoin's at 15K, you can, a, a year ago when I was when it was under, I said, accumulate under 20. Other than that, I don't know. Well, I do, you just have to trade it and it's exhausting. But I like accumulating gold, silver, Bitcoin, but it needs to be in these ranges. Uh, uh, TLT, oil, oil was nice at negative. <laughs> That's funny, everyone's like, what are you doing? Why would you buy it? I'm like, it's it's free. Yes, but we're all going to die. Okay. But guys, what I'm waiting for on this one, the, again, uh so this is this is your this is your beauty pageant here is and we're way above that 200. And I've been saying, you trade it up, you, you cross this thing, we're going up. You hit that little star, you get out of your position. 
You get hit my Bravo band, you right, you, you take your money. Right now on the swing trade where it's swinging down and now I have to wait. And I am not going to short it. I mean, you can. Uh, it's just a, it's a, you're a click away. But all I'm doing is I'm waiting. Okay, market top, my band's twisted, reversal, you're at 7, you're going to go to 8, 9, you're going to get a reversal at that point, but I'd really like to see even more of a beatdown. Personally, I'd like to see the Nasdaq I mean, come come down here. Come down here and then reverse. I think I'm uh, sucking on too much hopium on that one, but I'm waiting for a beat down and then a reversal. For those of you that don't know, that white line, that's my Bravo 9. I, I like to see above the 200, a strong uptrend, and then a strong downtrend. And now we put in, it's the reversal. But a lot of people are like, short it, and then they get wrecked. It's, it's really difficult. I mean, coming back here, right? And then you get you get wrecked because you're in an uptrend. You're like, oh, Nasdaq going down. Yeah, that 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 lasted a, a day. Down. Nope. Right off. Actually, this was a run on my Bravo band all the way up. But these pullbacks have just been so minuscule. It was nice going back in the day, right? You got above the uh, the 200, and my the reactor. Boom. You know, swing trade up, take profit. Another swing trade down, up, ride it. Also, if you wanted to learn how to swing trade, that's where I always start. When I taught high school, college, start them with swing trading. Well, actually, I would teach them how to start businesses first, and I made millionaires. I've been teaching the same concept to them, to you. I even saw a comment in the comments section from one of my former students. I hope you're doing good. But my swing trading course does not look like that. That's my bear market course. We'll be there momentarily. Give it, give it time. This is what you guys are doing. Dominate stocks, swing trading. I know it says 1,000, 60% off, start there. Then we will roll into that sweet, lovely bear market because all the macro data is pointing that way. It's just how long. I don't know, I don't care, whatever. We're gonna make money up. Then we're gonna make money down. <laughs> well, we'll make money up, we'll make money on the reversal, get under the 200, and we'll, we'll play this market down. And uh, Lance, good, good article, Lance. Uh, tax receipts, I've, I've spoken to you guys about this, at nauseum, another leading recession indicator. Well, along with, uh, where do your tax dollars go? <laughs> oh, gosh. This is, that would be very frustrating. Yes, very frustrating. But I wanted to just show you on these uh, federal receipts, uh, taxes in the toilet. And as compared to GDP, even more toilet. Look at that. Oh, we're, GDP, you're going to catch it, right? GDP, oh, it's not so bad. We're up, you know, we're up 0%, 0 point, right? No, no, no. You're going to follow that little black line, right, along with our, our tax receipts. Come on. Come, come, come down. Actually, looking at this chart, that red line, your GDP, gross domestic product, that thing, pixie dust, uh, gross domestic, pick, that thing's going to be pulled hard way down, like, you know, from the beginning of the video. Just cue the fire. What goes up must come down, right? Ah, hey, hope I made you guys laugh. Hope you're enjoying this weekend while you enjoy a weekend and I work for you. That's okay. I'll see you tomorrow.